do this. Uh, I could do this live on Facebook too. Uh, For all you early risers out there, let me get the uh, the link here. Uh, I'll do a watch along. Is your wife still asleep? Mm hmm. Is your wife still asleep? Uh, yes. Yeah. Probably. Probably. She know you're I mean, here. <laughs> well, she knows I left, but she was still in bed, so it's entirely possible that she went back to sleep. Unless the young ones woke up already, and then you know. Mm hmm. Is this right? You think anyone can hear us? I don't think there's anybody out there. Well, there it is. Mm. Do I need to hit that? Oh no, look okay, at that. Kills it. All right. Hi, Facebook. Oh, we've been recording. So, <coughs> welcome to Sequel Podcast. I'm Matt Bonta. And I'm Corey Easley. And this we're... Is season 18. <laughs> episode 141. 1041. Right. 42. <coughs> Maybe. And a half. So, we're going to do a watch along with God Salt. That's the plan. Commentary. Um... I don't know if anyone's going to watch on Facebook, but, uh, the movie's on or, YouTube. or if I did it right, even I put a link somewhere in there, or you can just go to YouTube and you can find, uh, you can go to sequelproductions.com, check out my feature films playlist and go to God Salt, or you can just Google God Salt and it's got like that old, uh, that old poster that I have. Ah, oh, no, come here before you fucking make too much noise. Okay. All right. So, anyone who's listening in the future somewhere when people do listen to these things, I've got lined up on uh, YouTube. I'm hitting play now. And we're go. Oh, uh, look at that aspect ratio. That's just... I know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You so... I always thought when I saw that opening little thing. Blurb. I always thought it was a rat. Oh, uh, why? You guys were shooting. I don't know, because it goes... <laughs> and we had some text up there, a quote by Jesus Christ in red. As we all know, Jesus' lines in the Bible are red. And when I printed out the script, because we have a special guest appearance in this movie from Jesus Christ, at the end, <gasps> his lines were in red. Our Lord and Savior. For Funsky. For uh, up here on the screen is me. Uh, look at that baby face. And Ty. Oh, there's so much hair on my face too. It's all patchy. I I honestly I didn't know what I was doing because uh, I was for like, your look? yeah, for my look. Oh, yeah. I was just like, I'll just let it go. I think it was just like I was letting it grow anyways because I don't shave that often. And then eventually I was like, oh, I'll just let it grow for my scenes. Because once we are done with my scenes, I shave like my whole head, my head, my face. It's like there, are, there are photos of me uh, during the production when we're still filming. It happens. It happens. <laughs> it's like, actually, no, it's, it's, it's gross. It doesn't happen. Um, it's funny because when I first watched this movie, when it actually screened in Vegas. The first line of the movie is, you guys look like a couple of fags. And I felt like it turned everyone off who was there. The few people that were in the screening room, or in the theater. Right. It might be a little... A little rough on our PC culture. And this was... When did I screen it? Mm, two years? years or two years two ago? Two years ago? Two years ago. Yeah. So. Was it two years ago? And then we immediately made another movie. Remember making this movie, Corey? I do. I actually remember some of the stuff we did at the bar. You were here for this. In fact. 
<clears throat> this is you coming up. Uh, yeah. Or no. Yeah, no. This is that's 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 why you guys are going outside. Is to. Well, the fun the I funny went. thing is is yeah we're following you, but I remember. Yep, it's me and Black Trick. I remember seeing <laughs> you guys. I guess we didn't film you guys talking to the bar and walking out, or maybe it just didn't line up. I don't remember. I don't think that made the particular cut. But I think there was a few extra seconds there. <laughs> He's like pointing at something. <laughs> what is he pointing at? We're just playing it up, you know. Like <laughs> when you have unnamed characters. I think you stop and turn around and look at some point. Like this is a nice follow shot because we're followed out of the bar. I like a good long follow shot. Like a deposit. <laughs> it's all <laughs> one take too. Look at that. How you didn't? That's all one take. <laughs> there's some innocent nope. bystander. Oh, there's a cut. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> Some poor asshole. That whole thing's not even there anymore, I don't think. No, no, they tore down this car garage since then. So we made they this movie a, in 2014. They put a big... It's now 2020. The year of the... Whatever. The Rona. <laughs> yeah. For those of you who don't know, to put a stamp on this, we're going through one of the worst, like, plague years. It's not even... Since last it's year. It's not real. <laughs> it's a fake. It's, it's real because news. they made us really stay home, but I didn't because I still had to go to work. Unlike some people. I remember going up the stairs. I didn't get that. Oh man, Alexa's talking to us. I remember because Patrick was talking to me when we were going up the stairs and he was doing this number mm -hmm. with his hand. And I remember him going, why the fuck did we take the stairs? <laughs> and why did we park all the way the fuck up here? <laughs> Presumably the lot was full. That was a nice little tackle. You told me how to tackle. This was all improv. I don't even know <laughs> what to say. I hate improv so much. Because it's, it's too easy to just be like, just Fuck you! Yeah. Well, you didn't exactly write that scene. No. It was just like, oh, let's do this. It was on the fly. Right. The whole thing. And I don't really like acting either. Like... I don't know. You didn't give me a whole lot to work with. Well, like even here where I'm talking. <laughs> I'm just making <laughs> shit up. Um, I don't know where we're driving. This is Dakota's car. We had to borrow it for the night so that we can go film this. Ty's got like a chain wrapped around his hand. And that old ass gun, that's like one of the first guns that we used when making movies back in the day. It was like Patrick's airsoft gun that doesn't work. Does it look like a real gun? Uh, it's a little shiny, but yeah. Like you can see that it's a little paint shiny. It's got in the hammer opinion. pulled back. <laughs> yeah, and he's got his finger in the trigger guard like that. Nothing like a little realism. <laughs> But literally, it's like, okay, he's got a gun, and we're just watching these two guys See, like, talk. he keeps putting his finger around the trigger. Oh, he's like, oh, I better, better not do that. <laughs> I smash his head. Um, and why, okay, so, like, building that little piece there, why did you do that? Because he wanted to wait, and I didn't. So you knock out your partner? Yeah, so that I can go Why ahead. not just get out of the fucking car and go, okay, pussy, stay here? I mean, true enough. But we needed him to stay there so that he can drive away with the girl later when he uh, wakes up. This is out in Spanish Springs. Looks that's easy Virginia enough to go, yeah, to Virginia City. You see? It's not, and that's great lighting. It was For perfect. natural lighting. When we got there, it was perfect, and then it took us too long to get stuff done, and the lighting got away on us. It's not, it wasn't a matter of... of too long to get stuff done. It, it's it's just that getting set up to starting yeah. takes a while, and and you know well, we're burning daylight. A, this was a weekday, I think. It was Memorial Day. Was it? It was Memorial Day. Why did we start so late? <clears throat> the only yeah, especially if it's Memorial Day. I think the idea is like, oh, let's go when the sun's going down. <laughs> Yeah. Rather than let's go maybe an hour, even uh, two to one hours, one to two hours earlier, 
to figure out what we were going to do. But maybe maybe we couldn't get somebody till five. Maybe we couldn't get you till five. I don't remember. Yeah, who, who could really say? I was available all day. Yeah, I think we had trouble getting everybody together until a certain time. But, I mean, thinking back on it... We met in the parking lot. Yeah, we met at the uh, Meadowood Mall parking lot. Which is no longer there. No, that's still there. The Meadowood Mall parking lot is still there. We weren't at Meadowood. We yeah, were we were. Parkland. No, no, we were at Meadowood. Were we? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, because that's on the way out of town to Virginia City. Maybe. Yeah, no, it was Meadowood. Um, oh, no. I've been knocked out for a long time and my partner's gone. There was only two bullets in this gun. (laughs) (laughs) Like looking at it, the lighting looks good. A little dark. I know it's starting to get dark here here, for sure. And then right there, it's super dark. We're just kind of almost. That was kind of a fun shot. Who was holding the camera? Was it Patrick? That was Patrick. He was shooting. Uh, We got the tiki torches. Something that I. Also bought some more tea torches for the last movie, Not in the Dark. Uh, Hannah playing the master. Mike. She had great big boobies. <laughs> I mean, I know that just goes without saying, but it's true. Oh, there's your head. There's my head in a much darker, like the it cut from lighter to a darker thing. She pulls the eye out and uses it as like an olive in a blood martini. <laughs> Thankfully, it landed right. That was perfect. And then the movie starts. The sequel production. God salt. <laughs> I really liked using this footage. I thought it was super good. Like, it was really fun. Patrick, top billing. Um... Because it's all this witchcraft and devil shots in this documentary about witchcraft called Hexen. Or maybe it's Hexen. Maybe. But it's spelt H A X A N. Like mm-hmm. Hexen. Look, they even got some early, like, stop motion in it. <laughs> and then of course I went back and used the same trick for Not in the Dark with Nosferatu with Brent Matthews Brent Matthews who was our drama teacher at one point <laughs> in our lives fucking almost 20 years ago at this point it's insanity has it 17 years not well 2001 so oh, I was yeah. in See How They Run in 2001. Yeah. And so... Well, we graduated in 03, though. Right, we graduated in 03, but like I met Matthews 19 years ago. Special effects by Corey Easley. Ooh. Should give that a lowercase c. Probably. <laughs> Ever since I was a lowercase c. So what was your preparation in, in making, so far, the effects you've done with my head? That was... I don't want to say that was the hardest one, but it was pretty hard. <laughs> it was it was it was kind of tough because I didn't have a lot to work with. Like, obviously, we were we were cash poor, right? Yeah, like, there wasn't a lot going on in the in the financial world for for making this movie. Well, I mean, and so it was like a kind of just making it up as it went. And right, well, we weren't sitting around with, like, 3000 bucks, and this is what we have. Yeah. Right? It was just a matter of, like, like, oh, we, we need a head, how much is it going to cost? 20 bucks? Okay, whatever. Yeah, so I went and got, you know, like, a styrofoam head and sculpted over it the best I could off of, like, Facebook pictures and stuff. I don't know why you didn't just... Well, we don't even see the face. Yeah. But, like, you had... Would you put a wig on it? Yeah, I had a, a costume wig... That I put on it, and then I cut the hair, and then I like tried to put some spray white paint in, it, right? And because I had the well, green had and black white hair, and I was trying to spray paint the white black, and then oh, it was a white wig. No, it was black. Okay, it had white streaks. It was for a storm costume. Okay, that the wife did a while ago. So it had long hair. <laughs> so then I sculpted the thing. I put the wig on it. I glued it on, and then I gave it a haircut. I don't know. And then spray painted some green on there because I had green and black hair. 
Um, and this is our first time seeing... <laughs> <laughs> we see Robert getting blown by my sister Jessica. I Which mean, is a recurring, a recurring theme in the... In the Matthew Bonton universe of films, of detective universe or whatever it is. It's funny because... Didn't Patrick film this part? Yes, so... And you were not happy with this footage. I wasn't necessarily not I, I think it's great. It's fine. It's what just... What you ended up with was okay. It wasn't quite... Like, I told him what I wanted, but, I mean, you tell somebody something and they see it in their head differently than I saw it in my head. You know, it's like, this is what I wanted you to do. I wanted you to do this and then follow that way and do this thing because I wanted another long follow shot. And we even cut it down when uh, we went in to edit it. But Patrick shot this because I had to work. Right. So I was working, and, you know, I'm up and at work at, like, 6 o'clock in the morning. And so they, I think, meet up at, like, 7 or 8 to film all this. <laughs> and this was, I think, Robert's second day? Um, I think it was his second day. Yeah, because I think we did the other stuff. No. We did the other stuff first. I don't remember because I remember there's something going on with the hat. And I forget what's going on with the hat. So maybe this was his first day. The beanie. Right, because he's wearing the beanie here. So I think this might have been his first day. And so the second day, he's like, "I don't have the beanie, man. I'm sorry." And it's like, "Okay, it's fine. Don't worry about it." And so, right after this, he loses the beanie. Uh, when he's with Dakota and I didn't even think to have him do that it just kind of fell off maybe he thought to do that but there was right. never a discussion about it beforehand which gun was that? do you remember? Uh, oh that's my gun that's yours? yeah that's my my Airsoft 1911 but you weren't even around for this stuff did I you give it to me? me? I gave you my gun are you sure? Was, yeah positive I don't even remember that this movie's going by so quick, and there's so many things we haven't even talked about yet. Um, Robert was a brand new player in this. Uh, Does a bear shit in your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> I have a way with words, don't I? <laughs> I like to put spins on the way people talk. I mean, that's how I talk. I like to fuck with common quotes and shit yeah. like that. Spin them around, make them whatever, they, make them yours. You know, it, it's funny to think like, oh, this movie was a lot easier than the next one, or the next one was a lot easier than the one after that. It just feels like, oh, the movie's done. We're sitting here six years after the fact talking about it, and we're watching it. And it's like, oh, like, I don't know why I can't <laughs> seem to. This is your kid. <laughs> Sorry. It's just some of the stuff sticks out. Like, it seems like I do way too many close-ups now. And for me, that's just a matter of like, oh, you guys don't have to memorize lines. We'll just feed you the lines and you'll say them. And then I'll just cut it together and it looks like a movie. But like, they're like, you know, it was a, a back and forth with her and him. And then I got them in a nice wide. I, didn't, I don't get enough master wide shots like I should. And like I used to. Like, look at all this. This is all good stuff. This is them running downtown. And this is an Authmentis song playing. I remember we shot Dakota and Summer. And then I had to schedule this. And then... I might even film it twice because I also needed tie in here to drive the car up. It's, it's hard for me to remember if, if Ty was there or if we shot Ty by himself with Dakota's car early one morning. But I know when we had Dakota and Robert, there was like a, a big truck back there on the other side of the fence. You can't see it, but it was like a big like street sweeper or something that was just on. It wasn't driving. It wasn't making noise. It was, yeah, it was just a, a loud hmm during all of that dialogue. And of course, it's <laughs> Patrick and Kelly banging. Man, this is so much fun. It's so funny. And it's it's like, I think this was one of the first shots that we did. 
like we're making this movie a year after like our first big return feature film and our first feature that we ever done so like Patrick looks different he had moved to LA like the the fall beforehand and, and come back unsuccessful with doing anything and look she picks up the rag to wipe the cum <laughs> out of her you never see that in movies uh <laughs> but like that's what happens you know you gotta clean up you gotta clean up the uh your dirty shame your dirty shame <laughs> the fucking those cuffs were originally supposed to be for I think Robert getting handcuffed that's in fact true. when Robert gets handcuffed earlier it's just regular cuffs but those regular cuffs had like a fuzzy red on there like see that's the thing is like they didn't try to work through whatever problems they had and if I were there, I would have been like, well, just do it like this. Right. Like, sometimes you kind of get in your own way when you're trying to do a shot. You're like, why isn't this working? And it's like, well, it doesn't have to work. It just needs to look like it's working. Right. So the audience, like, I think, like, maybe his wrists were too big for those the cuffs that they had, and they couldn't get him to close on them. Right. It's like, well, you don't need to close on them. You just need to look like he has them on. Right. Or, you, you know, you can do a close-up shot where you're doing it, you know, carefully so it closes, and then you splice it in. <laughs> he's such a fucking scumbag right should we be explaining I, any I of mean, this or? you know it's if if the people are watching the film they've probably seen it probably already seen it already our <clears throat> typical uh Typical guest audience here <laughs> has probably already seen this, and we are reviewing something that is six years old, right? And getting older by the by day, the, by the second, by the second, getting older and older. So, so I don't know. And they both it's, get phone calls, and I played around with like split shots here, trying to get the. The fact that both of them are getting basically the same phone call. There's a screw. I know. It's like two people would have to be calling them rather than it just being the one captain that's calling one person and then calling the next. Right. I mean, I just I just liked the, the split shot. So somebody else had to call one of them and the captain called, like, cheese, presumably. Oh, the wifey's home. Just on their way out. Even though they've been together presumably all night long. Because the timeline of this movie, if you think about it, it, I mean, it's all over the place, but if you think about it, um, they were at the bar together the night before. All the detectives were together at the bar the night before, and they're still raging all night long. Right. So, like, where my character and Ty's character were at the bar and we followed you guys out, the other... Those guys split and they went to do the little skeet skeet bang bang. The other four... <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's the whole, like, crux of the movie is, is, is dependent upon them leaving and going and having sex at his place. But, like, all the other four detectives are still at the bar um, when us two leave. So the other four being uh, uh, Stone, Cheese, Black, and Boop. Were you here this day? Uh, where are we at? No. I was not there. Oh, this was when, I think this was when Kelly went to your job and got the half arrow. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think that was this day. This was one of the last couple of days that we had. Like, we had a couple of early days where we went all day long. So this day we filmed these scenes. Right. And then we shot out to uh, Kelly's house way the fuck out. And right, to shoot the kind of weird ending. Not ending, but... The captive, the captive scene. scene, and I think the interrogation scene. Like what? Like and this is her house right here. What? What is this area called? Do you remember what this area is called? It's Where way it? the fuck out. Like you're driving through Red Rock, past Red Rock, Rancho Haven. Rancho Haven. I think yeah. that is what it's called. Is there? Is there another one out there? <coughs> no, it's just it's just Red Rock and Rancho Red Haven. Ro Red Rock and Rancho Haven. So like, it's so funny because where they park. 
Like, we should have gotten a better shot, and Greg had the suggestion that we never made it out to do, because, you know, it's like, well, we're doing all this other stuff. Right. But there's, like, a, a mansion kind of house with, like, a big yard way out on, um, oh, what's it called? Uh, it's it's downtown area, past Virginia going, like... Over by Virginia Lake? Over by Virginia Lake. What's that street? So there's the P. Uh, I'm not remembering. It's not Par, it's not Plum, it's... It's it's like a. <laughs> <laughs> I know the area you're talking about. There's like a lot of old like mansions and large houses over there. Right, and there's like golf courses or uh, there not a golf but tennis courts up there. Yeah, there's tennis courts and then there's the golf courses across Mayberry, I think. Not Mayberry. Oh, the it's yeah. on the other side. But what is that fucking road? I don't remember. Well, there's tennis courts there, but it's on that road, um, and there's like a, a nice like iron fenced and big house kind of right and we should have shot that just as a that's not like a just, yeah just yeah just like a quick little uh, b-roll shot but we go from like the back street over here lear or is it lear yeah no coming moya out, coming out of what well, goes to red oh red okay, yeah moya goes up to moya red. so just back there on moya cut to rancho haven Cut to El Rancho, and like right there by Sun Valley, where Matthews lived. Like, it looks legit. Like, oh, they're here, and then they're in this house, and they go into the bedroom or whatever to the other like main and living room that's, area. That's the. I've been surprised by the number of times and ways in which we could cheat our sets, so that we could do that where you like. Walk into the other room and beep boop. Look at that! Oh, we're in a completely different place, you know. Like the stuff that we did between the house, and your door house, and street my tufts. house and street toughs. You know, we basically rearranged the floor plan. Well, because just because of the way we shot cause, it. Because in that movie, and I know we're going to commentate for this, but in that movie, yeah. what, we're in your bedroom and we walk into where your bathroom is, but really it's going into your hallway bathroom. Right. <laughs> <laughs> because the hallway bathroom was bigger, but we wanted it to be in the bathroom for the master bedroom. So <clears throat> I think it's and I think it's fun to do that. And I think Patrick here has a big cut on his eyebrow that he got from that day that we were filming up here. Um, was this when we drove up here into the mountain area and we went into the forest? No, oh, oh, you're, yeah, you're talking up on Peavine, yeah. And he, he was fucking around with, like, well, uh, we were running. Iris. We well, were no, running. no, they were fucking around with, like, sticks and doing, like, a lightsaber oh, thing. And, they, and it broke off and smashed him in the fucking eyebrow. And he's got, like, a, a big old fucking <laughs> bloody ding on his head. Um, and we shot his stuff twice. We went in one day and shot his lines without Iris. Um, and then he's like, you know what, can we do it again? Matthews. Ask me like, hey, can we, can we do this again? And you can bring the girl, and we can do this. Um, and so we went in and we did it again. And that was another one. Like, for me, it's always like, oh, we got one more day, right? And then you edit it and you're looking through it and you're like, oh, we still need this. So I guess we still have one more day. So I've got like three or four final days, and and a lot of people have final days, anyways. Sure. So, like, we did, like, a final day with Iris where she went in and she's in the scene with him. And then, like, you know, we had, I had final day with Robert and everyone else. And so <laughs> she pops in <laughs> wearing clothes like she got it from Savers. But she's, like, she's still got that fucking, like, devil cult necklace that they gave her. I don't know why she's wearing it or why they don't take it off or... It's such a weird situation. Obviously, it's fantasy. It's not real life. In real life... It would be evidence. Not even that. She would be in some kind of, like, foster care or... Yeah, maybe so. But, I mean, he's the grandfather, <clears throat> I believe, right? So they're like, oh, he goes... She goes to the next logical relative. Yeah, I mean, it does not make sense for that to happen. It's, it's just weird and strange. And I think uh, Kelly's and uncle were watching the house at the time so uh like they were You're kind of hanging dead, around. right i'm already dead so pigeons got my cell phone and she's calling me yeah so like 
<laughs> we did some wacky things. I was constantly changing my number and names in my phone so that when I call people, you look on their phone. Like, it'll say, like, Abby, or it'll say whoever. Yeah, she's calling me here because they were together the night before. And you find out here in a flashback that she's, like, pregnant. Right. So, like, it was, like, only hours prior that she's like, oh, hey, you know, you, you knocked me up. Where are you? And, and, and everything like that. Where are these two people? Like, we found Ty. He's alive in a coma. Yeah, but where the fuck are you? Where the fuck are you? We got this little girl. What, what's going on? And Pigeon took my phone. Like, there's a lot of little connections here and there. Like, it's such a deep movie. Or some of the other ones aren't quite as deep. Some of the other ones are a little superficial. So, like, here... This is also the night same, before. Yeah, same, so, same day we filmed the bar stuff. So once we're done talking, us two, in this scene, um, either me or Ty, I think it's Ty, he walks over and grabs the beers, and I walk over and I sit next to him. So, like, this all is supposed to flow. Presumably right there sitting is some dude, but, like, Kelly and Patrick are the ones that are actually, you know, they're scooted up for a little bit off screen. <laughs> There's a flashback and a flashback. <laughs> yeah, I love that. This movie is so full of flashbacks, and I guess I'm the flashback guy. Gross. <laughs> she's taking the pregnancy test. Oh, and she's wearing a supernatural shirt here. Is she really? Yes. Fantastic. It's like a, uh, a supernatural based on the Akira poster, mm. where that's Dean walking up to the. I think it says Dean right there walking up to the. What, do they have an Apollo? And see, I'm wearing it right there. So that You're was like, yeah, that was like the morning. It. I get it. Before. It's always a fun thing to be like, oh, the chick is wearing right. the dude's shirt the morning after. Try to connect the, the dots, as it were. And you suck. Were you here? You weren't here for this one. Yeah, I was. Oh, you were here for this one. Yeah, you, and you, yeah, you set it up so that that's, that's what I was going to bring up. But like, I don't remember you being here during the day on this one. And this was one of those days. It's because this wasn't during... No, this was during the day. This was one of those pickup shots that we had to do. That's right. And it was, and like... We were doing, we were filming, gonna film this stuff, but she couldn't make it to the bar that night. Not that night, but a different day, I think. And Ty's but filming this, and there's Ty right there, oh, filming in the mirror. Oh, cameraman in the mirror. Because it was always pulling teeth trying to get her to film. Like, this is a different day. Yeah. I don't think you were there for this. So he says the fags line, right? And, yeah. you know, fags is a line that people don't necessarily like, but, like, it's a connector. Like, if you're really into this movie and you really give it a shot, I think that thing ended over there on my phone. So we're not live anymore. Yeah, fuck them. I don't even know if it was live to begin with. Yeah, see, Ty comes over, and so I'm eating the apple from the beginning of the movie. And, like, I think some of these things accidentally fell into place as connectors. Right. There's a lot to unpack in this movie, and it's it shoots by, and that's that's something that I think every time I watch one of my movies, is they shoot by. I think this one especially though is the pace might be a little fast, but it does make it interesting. And it's still an hour forty five <clears throat> minute movie, and it's sure. like I watch so many movies all the time, and I'm like these people get away with these things where I stress over uh, matching cuts. And making sure that, like, everything makes sense. It's like, oh, well, why does this person do that? I don't know. Well, let's make sure that... It makes sense. Th that we know why they're doing that. And if, right. they, and if we can't figure that out, change it. Make it work. So all my movies, there's not any, like, real filler. Everything in there is there for a reason. And I, I make sure that I'm writing, like, at least 90, 70 to 90 pages. And then building on that while we're shooting, while we're working... So I get a more full movie, an hour and a half. So I they zoom like, by. Sure. And I feel like, I don't know, it comes down to whether or not the hand-holding is necessary. Between? Like when you and the audience? Out, yeah. Okay. Between, yeah, between the filmmaker and the audience. Fucking pancake. <laughs> <laughs> Robert's fun to film with. He's got a lot of energy. He does. And he's and he's got a lot of ideas too. Like he likes acting and I he becomes the person 
very well, just like like Patrick does. Patrick's very good at that. He becomes that actor, or that character, and and is living that character. Absolutely. When you're on set, and some people are hard to act against or with because they can't do that. Mm -hmm. Because they're just saying the lines. Well, see, like I said, Robert and Patrick, they kind of become the character like, but like Mike. Um, it was different with Mike here, who plays Pigeon. Mike was Mike, and then he was like, okay, now I'm playing a part, and this is who that part is. Whereas, like Patrick, he just does it. Right. He doesn't have to get in the headspace. He doesn't click one off. You know, Mike is is, you know, punching in and right. doing his job. Right. Or as, you know, Patrick doesn't necessarily need to punch in, he just goes and he picks up a shovel and starts digging, or whatever it is, however you want to see it. So Mike is like, you know, he's an actor, this is, you know, the next acting gig, whereas Patrick is like, let's do the thing, and we do the thing. Right. I don't know if and one of a, those is a method or not. It's stylistic. And so this was what we shot first. This is what we were burning daylight with, was this scene. Because he has this long monologue that Patrick wrote. One of the few things that Patrick definitely has his stamp on it. Right. And and when he starts saying spick and shit like that, I, uh, that's when like the last of the people in the, the theater walked out. I think there were some young girls and they might have been mean, Mexican. <laughs> but he's a bad guy. He's a bad guy. And it's like if you watch the movie, you see that he gets what's coming to him. <clears throat> it's true. And I mean, here's the thing. The, the way our culture like hangs up on shit like that you can't enjoy it for what it is right there's like a water bottle right there I remember he fucking like slammed his hand down on like a rusty upturned nail <laughs> do you remember that? did he hurt himself? well it's like it was like a rusty nail and we're looking like did it break the skin did it break the skin you're gonna be okay cause we're not gonna be home for another like three hours for you to <laughs> wash this thing out <laughs> but you see like Pigeon's like a cowardly piece of shit here he talks big and everything else like that but then she fucking puts him in a place that we're constantly fucking going out of focus like a lot of out of focus stuff here there's a lot of like sorry mommy in and out of <laughs> this was day one this was day one of filming. And, like, this was the first time that we had seen her since we met her and her mom. And that's me right there. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. <laughs> you catch yourself? It's funny, because, like, they're just driving. So it's like I set up the camera on the dash. And you're, like, laying in the back seat? No, no, I'm standing there. And it's like, drive and come back around. Oh, okay. And then uh, we took her out, and then I sat there to film his lines. Gotcha. Um, this was one of the, like, like I said, trying to film with her was like pulling teeth. So this is one of those days where it's like, oh, it's lunchtime at work. Had it for like 15, 20 minutes to film these lines. And that was it. And there was two days like this. So this, this day with her and Kelly in the car, and then the next one where we're actually filming on the sidewalk at Jay-Z Penny's where we worked with her and uh, Jessica and Kelly. And there's the camera shadow right there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See, it's funny, like, you pick that stuff out really easy and I'm not looking at it. Hopefully no one else does. I think most people don't look at it. Like, if you want to be pedantic about how something is shot or whether there's something else in it, like, oh, there's the script, or oh, there's a bottle of water. Well, for those of you who's playing the drinking with, game, the cameraman <laughs> it's time to flexion. take a shot. Um, this was the stuff that we shot before going up to, uh, what's, where did we go and film? Uh, we went up to... Susanville. Susanville. It wasn't all the way to Susanville. It was like Honey Lake. <laughs> it's the first rest stop on yeah, the, the way first, up The to first Susanville. rest stop you could find on the way out there, and that's because California has the nicest rest stops. And uh, you Nevada picked him up. You picked him up, right? You picked up Robert. Yeah, I picked Robert up from God knows where. Was it Sack and Save? Or not Sack and Save, uh, Save he Mart? Was down, he was like in town somewhere. And I picked him up on my way out to the house because I had to load up 
You were leaving work, right? Yeah, I was leaving work. You picked him up picked to him my up. on the way to my house. We met at your house, and then I had to go to my house to get the gear I needed to do and head up to Susanville. And, out to Susanville. and while you guys did that, we shot this thing. But you picked him up, and he had to stop and get him like booze, right? Well, he was already had been drinking. He'd already been lit a little bit. I think he was already like was drunk already. <laughs> Buzz was on the way down, or so he, he needed was, to keep it going. He was either hungover, coming down, I don't remember. But I, he, dude, he smelled like liquor when I picked him up. And then, <laughs> and he had me stop at the gas station and, you know. He picked up a couple of little bottles. I'm not his daddy, you know. Like, if he wants a couple of little bottles. <laughs> what was going through your head? Like, this is the first time you I'm, meet this guy, right? I'm like, I'm thinking, well, I hope this works out. <laughs> <laughs> but I think most of the time that I worked with Robert, he was fucked up. Like he he would get fucked up to work. Right. And for after after working with him, like when we went to the house, when we did the did the scene at Patrick Grandma's house, um, that was that day. Time. He wasn't though. Uh, that's why I want to say that was his first days because, um. I want to say that was his first day. That was the first time I met Pat, I met Robert, was when we went to the house. Okay, and then this would have been the second time when you picked him up. And yeah, because we were familiar, and we had worked together a little bit, and he's like, hey, man, can you give me a ride? And I was like, yeah, I don't give a shit. So I picked him up. But And, and he had... <laughs> Fucking Patrick just being mean to the little girl. <laughs> yeah, this was day one. I, it's hard for me to remember what was day one, but this was definitely day one for her. Well, because a lot of stuff got shot... Right, and that goes from, so now we're in Cold Springs, <laughs> and that last shot was like, is that it, uh, by Casey's? Red Rock. Yeah, this is Casey and Allie's old house, and he's snorting coke in front of her and everything else like that. He's not, I mean, exactly doing it in front of her, just... <laughs> Adjacent. Yeah, like he's <laughs> near her. She's like kicking rocks over there, and she... <laughs> She's like, darn. <laughs> like, I'm done doing it with the coke now. Let's go. It's such a funny movie. It's so ridiculous. But, like, it works if you think about it. It all works. So I mean, a lot of it works out. And he's meeting up with Ali's character, who was from an earlier film, Dread and Terror in Salt Lake City, that had cheese and her. Did you ever see that movie? Uh, I've seen clips. I've kind of glossed over something. The two Mormon guys kill her parent, or yeah, kill her mom. Ty and... Uh, and TJ. And TJ. Were they the Mormons? Twin Mormon? brothers. Yeah, they were the Mormons. Did they play Mormons together? Yeah. That's... Yeah. So... Which is really fun. They're, <laughs> it's fun to play a Mormon. It was the proto-typical... It was the, it was the proto-Book of Mormon. <laughs> Dread and Terror the Musical is coming to a, a Broadway stage near you. But, so who is... What's her relation... In this whole thing. Who is she? So in Dread and Terror in Salt Lake City. Right. There are two Mormons who are going around and they're, you know, spreading the word. And if they see someone they think is like, oh, they probably have a lot of money in here. They'll go in, kill that person, and rob them. Okay. Okay. And they happen to do that to her mom. Okay. So she's like, I want to fucking find these guys. These idiot cops can't do it. Meanwhile, the two idiot cops, me and Patrick, Jones and Cheese... Like, this is our case, right? We're looking for these two guys who are going around murdering people and robbing them. And we're at the bar, and then they rob us and beat the shit out of us. Or no, just cheese. Someone. And so, um, the two groups of two end up converging in the middle, finding them. And so, we beat the shit out of the Mormons and then give her the axe to kill them and finish them oh, off. Good. And her husband, boyfriend, fiancé, whatever... Got shot and killed right there. Oh, okay. So Cheese kind of takes, like, responsibility for the family now. Yes. And and she's probably agoraphobic, doesn't go out, so he goes and sees her. Gotcha. And presumably bangs her as well. Like, he's banging her, he's banging Stone, and, like, it's just a weird, like, she's like, what is going on? Like, like, Stone... In Crime America, not Crime America, Streaming Pavement. <laughs> it just throws them on the ground. It's like, wait here. 
See, this is one of those days, too. Like, I had Dakota... Like, I don't remember who I had when I had them. Because there's, like, a bunch of weird days where we did weird things. Like, oh, well, a lot I got of, these a lot people, of what can I shoot? Yeah. Like little intermediary pickups. and. Well, Dakota was one of those guys that was kind of hard to get sometimes. At that time, yeah. Like, right at the beginning of this movie, like, we helped him uh, move from one apartment to the next... And then he like was like in weddings, and we couldn't get a hold of him for like a couple of weeks. And it's like, dude, we're ready to make this movie. Are you in? Or are you out? And he's like, I'm in. I just need some time. And so he had a little time. So he he got started late in the game. So like all of his stuff that we shot is kind of like near the end. I was gonna say the first time I met him was when we were going to Susanville. Susanville. Yeah. So a lot of his stuff we shot on the second half of yeah. our film schedule. In fact, a lot of the stuff that, where he was. I, I don't think I was with him. Just when he, just when he died, that one time when we killed him, and that was it. Because pretty much he's just there to read lines and hang out with Robert. Yeah. You know, and like there's a lot of stuff with just these two. But it's like, oh well, let's. Can I have some? (laughs) Adults only. (laughs) And he's got my actual former wedding ring that he ended up fucking losing when they were dicking around at his grandma's house. Oh. And that, like, I love how the cloud look in the shot. Dude, I. And then so much so that that's a blue sky that I essentially green screen clouds onto. Huh? So that's really a blue sky. And you made it overcast. Right. It's it's like that sky right there. In fact, I shot that same stuff on this day. And then I was waiting for another overcast day, so I went out onto my, my porch deck and just filmed the gray sky for a few seconds, and then I just and green screened it in. in on this blue sky. Well done. Um, which is a trick I learned from, uh, did you ever see Planet Terror? The Robert Rodriguez movie with like the zombie with Bruce Willis and the military guys that are just, mm. they start turning into like zombies and shit. No, I can't say that I have. Like he needed to crane Rose McGowan up and out like a helicopter's picking her up and flying her out. And it's like, well, you know, we just shot it one morning with the blue sky when it was clear and then just use that as the green screen. So, because there are days where we've got perfectly blue skies and then there are days where it's just overcast. <laughs> like, we, we rarely have any in between. Right. It's like a flashback within a flashback. <laughs> like, that's one of my funny cut shots. Yeah, so these were the two days that we had to grab her during lunch. Because she was kind of doing this on the lowdown. Who was? Uh, Donna was, who plays Black here. Oh, she right. was doing this on the lowdown because the down low. Right, because her boyfriend or whatever. Fiance. Wasn't really interested in having her hang out with you. Or doing anything or doing beyond anything just hanging Right. Working or going home. Having a life. It was a fucked up situation, and, yeah. it, and it really weighed down on the production of this movie. Well, I remember that being, like, one of the the key things was, like, we only have Donna for, like, 40 minutes. <laughs> it's like, we have to do this tomorrow because we're going to have Donna right after work or whatever. Right, or, yeah. you know, she's here for these four hours and then she needs to go. And that might have been one of these days. Like, I think this day, in fact, we were filming here at Patrick's house with everybody, because everybody shows up at his house. Right. And, oh, no, okay, that's what it was. So that morning was the morning when we were filming the stuff at Kelly's house. Okay. And then we all went back to my house, because she had to leave by, like, noon. So we went all the fuck the way out to Rancho Haven, came all the way back so that she could leave. So we finished all that stuff as quick as we could. And then we were just waiting at my house... For her to come back. And we didn't know, like, you know, we had to come here and film, but we were just waiting in my house for a couple hours, hours upon hours, and we never heard back. So we're like, well, let's fucking go, because other people have to fucking leave, so... Can't wait all day for... Right. Someone. And then, like, we eventually got her back to shoot the the party scene that's coming where they're dancing with her. Right. And uh, her finishing her lines because I forgot to shoot their two lines because like there's an interrogation scene here with Black and Boop and uh, Fiasco, and I filmed them the first half, but in our haste uh, I forgot that there was another page of interrogation which I end up just uh, overdubbing it on a shot a slow 
crawl in onto a doorknob <laughs> is where they are in the in the garage. Yeah, so this was all one day. That was my guts. <laughs> have you eaten this morning? I have not. <laughs> this was fun. Like, this was good acting. So I got a lot of good acting out of these people. And we had a lot of fun here because we're like... Uh, Danny, just stand there fucking look at shit while they're fighting. That's, while that's one of my favorite lines of, of, of Patrick's. Is, Do you pick up some fucking KFC? Which is a callback to a movie where... He's like, KFC, Thursday night is KFC. That's in an older cheese film. Mm-hmm. The scumbag. And see, we go from his house upstairs. To your apartment. To my apartment's bedroom because his dad was like, no, you guys can't shoot in my bedroom anymore. Because earlier, back in the day, years before this, like his dad was always not around. Right. So we took advantage of filming... Anywhere and everywhere in the house and tearing things up and right. and shit like that. And his dad was like, nope, <laughs> not going to happen. Yeah. It's so funny. And, like, she had, like, a couple extra blankets and those pillows there, the brown ones and mm-hmm. whatever that thing is. Well, I remember talking about this particular scene because you're like, we have to, like, girly it up. That's what she, yeah, that's what she wanted to do. So she ran out to her car where she had a couple of, like, shit. There's, like, a thing up there that you can't really see on the headboard that she brought in. It's kind of like a... A shawl or something that she just kind of spread yeah, out. Like doily thing, yeah. And it's always fun seeing these two fight. And this is the same bedroom when they break up in Streaming's Pavement where she fucking leaves him. So, like, it works. Because that earlier movie, which is essentially the last movie in the trilogy, because this takes place before Streaming's Pavement, because, spoiler alert, she dies. Everybody dies in Streaming's Pavement, in fact, throughout that movie. And you know what? Funny thing is, everybody dies in this movie, too. <laughs> but Jesus shows up to save the day. I mean, <clears throat> Jesus is the man. Jesus is the man. He's my favorite fictional character. Just gonna look at <laughs> Just put that out there. Fictional character. Radio silence. <laughs> well, I, just, he, I like watching Patrick spaz out on film. It's good. He well, does it so does it well. There's uh, for those who well taking uh, taking shots. There's the script in the corner over there, behind the door. You see it for a second. There's the script. There <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can see the shawl thing hanging. Yeah, I saw it. So here was the pickup thing, where it's just like, here, say your lines. And then I'm just going to zoom in slowly on the door. Because I forgot to film it. Okay, so this is the first page. So I had skipped it to the second second page where we actually filmed them doing it. Because we haven't seen it yet, right? No. I mean, you, that's obviously me and the reflection there on the doorknob. But, like, if you're not looking for it, you can definitely see it as it gets closer. Well, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, probably wouldn't have realized it right up front. Let's see, they're like still hanging out. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, this was so much fun making this fucking movie. And not at the same time. I think about that for every movie. It's like, oh man, it's retail so the pain in the ass. But then you're watching it and you're like, yeah. Yeah, it was fun. Not in the yeah. dark. It's like, yeah. But in reality, like, it was a hassle. These days were, these days were great. I could always count on Kelly. I could always count on Patrick. They were basically doing nothing. Like, right. like she had a job. I'm not sure if he was working or not, but she had a job, but it was, it was so flexible and it was usually when we weren't filming. Right. So like on a Saturday afternoon in the morning to the afternoon, we had her because then she would go to work at like five or something like that. Yeah, she or worked in the evening. She worked from like, like three to whenever they closed. Yeah. And see, if we keep cutting back to all this Virginia City stuff. It's like, man... We've got a lot of footage. Like, this is one of those things where this is why we were burning daylight. I loved shooting there. It was... Just because it was so interesting. Like, everything around, it's all very real. It's it's heavy. It's the... It's just dense. Mm-hmm. There's a lot to look at, a lot to see. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so we shot Cut back this. back to the interrogation. Right, we shot this at Kelly's 
house's garage. And then she had to leave. So I want to say there was two days at Kelly's place. So there's the stuff we shot with her. And then there was another day, but I, I want to say she wasn't there. So we did two days at Kelly's place. So this stuff without uh, Danny. And then we did a day with Danny. So basically it was like a swap of her for Danny when we shot with them. <laughs> it's just like... Spastic manic <laughs> cuts of Robert swearing and shit like that. And I remember like giving Kelly the black eyes. She gets punched in the face. And it's like, she's like this pretty blonde in the movies. Let's just fuck up her face. <laughs> well, it comes off really well because over the course of, you know, when it first happens to the, uh, Towards the end, like it gets like darker. And well, like, it well it got, was like it was like Kelly, I need you to put the makeup on, and then uh, we get there and it's like, oh fuck, you don't have it on yet. We need to shoot the the scene here before you have it, so you need to take it off. And it's like, okay, now we can shoot it, so put it back on. <laughs> so there are days where it's just light, like it looks like light here. But day one, when they're at the uh, Patrick Grandma's house, right, that, where she first had it. It's a lot darker because right. that was her first day doing it. So she just did it to make it look good. And then from as we went on, it's like, let's just fucking get this makeup on. <laughs> this was a longer scene. That was at uh, Patrick's grandma's house. No, this. Was it? This was at uh, Casey and Allie's house. Oh. This was the last day. Okay. Because we couldn't film her again when I wanted to film this. Right. At Patrick Grandma's house, or no, or somewhere. There's somewhere Actually, I wanted to film this. Yeah. But we couldn't get her, and it's like, oh, well, we still have, like, a little bit to film with whoever. So we filmed, uh, earlier when we first got her, we went and filmed the stuff in the truck, the later stuff in the truck that's coming up, and then we shot up here to Casey's house, and we shot this, and I wanted to say that we I had to film one more thing, like, that's why we went to Casey's house. Mm. But I can't think of anything else, so maybe we just shot up here to film this. Mm. So we shot up here and we went out into his backyard and just put them against the wall right. and shot them. But there had to have been another reason why we went there. Otherwise, we could have shot this anywhere without having right. to go up to Cold Springs. So there must have been something else we had to shoot up here. Um, but this was a longer scene. Um, I cut it back. And same with the last scene with the master where she has her monologue. Right. It was a much longer monologue. I cut that thing down too. But this is her big, like... Oh, and there was a there was a deleted scene in here somewhere. It might even have been here where we went out and we blew up the... Oh, the yeah. Tannerite right yeah. thing. Yeah. Because they're walking through, like, a minefield to catch some guy, but they have their first moment in that scene. Right. It was like a flashback. <clears throat> it was a flashback about him and her first moment together where they first kind of started liking each other. Right. But it, it, it didn't... It looked... I almost died that day. Cheesy as fuck. Did you? Not almost died, but when we went and shot that, uh, blew up that Tannerite, it exploded way too fast. We weren't even near it, though. I wasn't ready. Well, the first one, I was testing one. Oh, before we even before hooked we, up. Before we, yeah, and I blew it up very, very near myself. You were too close to it shooting? Uh, I was trying to do it without shooting it. Oh, and you couldn't get away. Didn't I mean, you say that you went flying or something? Yeah, it would have been great to have on film. <laughs> You'll never do that again, right? Uh, not in that manner. No. Not necessarily. You never know. I'll have a better plan. Whatever it takes time. to get the shot. What were you trying to do? So it's what Tannerite is. Tannerite so is like these... is a binary... Um, it looks like Dippin' Dots. It does look like Dippin' Dots, but it's... It's a... Uh, I don't know what the pellets are made of. I know it's a silica base, but there's two parts. And it's a silica base shit. And then you pour some. And like you pour it. It's like it's like an aluminum, right. an aluminum powder that goes in it. And you shake it and up. And you shake it up to mix it. And it's in and like then, a plastic container. Right, like a like a Tupperware container with a screw on the lid. And then when you hit it with um, high velocity Speed force. projectile. Like it striking a match. Quite literally explodes. Right. 
And, and so you were trying. So what to I was know. doing was I was trying to control it without having to shoot it with a gun, and you were trying I to remote was, explode it. Yeah, I was trying to use firecrackers. Is that why you got all those emails from ISIS right after that? Yeah, <laughs> they were like, "We like what you're well, doing." Hey, America! <laughs> I'm sorry. What did you say you were trying to do? I was trying to use a firecracker to light it off. I wanted to test it and see if it would work. So you put like a bottle rocket. So I'm not with like black cats. Aren't black cats the ones that just? They're just a. Fire oh, it's the snakes are what I'm thinking of. Yeah, no, no, black cats are, are firecrackers. Why are we Why using we snakes? <laughs> It wasn't a snake. It wasn't those little fire charcoal poops. <laughs> so I drilled a hole in the lid and I put a firecracker in there. And you lit it and then took off? And yeah. the firecracker just it blew just up too quick. Really fast. And now looking back at it, I was like, well, duh. No shit, it went fast. Fucking firecracker. You light them and throw them. So it worked then, even without yeah, having to have a bullet. It worked really well. <clears throat> Probably not a hundred percent the best. I mean, well, at that point, why didn't we just use fire? Like, you bundle up a bunch of firecrackers. Would it do anything? Uh, not a. It wouldn't be a singular explosion. It would be. Pop, 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 pop. Oh, okay. But we could have used like an M80 or something if we had them. Would have been fine. Okay. Probably would have been better that way because M80s have longer fuses. Gotcha. Well, now that we're done with that dialogue with Patrick and and Danny. Yeah, I mean... We're back to... Blah, 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 blah. This is... <clears throat> this is where we get the party scene. So I want to say that I shot this last because it was maybe darker. No, maybe not. But that was one of those days where we were waiting for Donna to show up. That was the one where, like, are you like, are you coming back? Like, we right. need you to finish the movie. Right. Everyone's here. We're waiting... <laughs> and we were waiting for the, the sun to go down too because this is a night scene. You can see there, there's still a little bit of daylight through the, the window, but it's dark enough. Sure. Um, I think this was just a day that we just had um, we just had Hannah and uh, Olivia. Like, this is just her outside and that's just her at my place. No script this time. Is that Cheese's old lady? Yeah. She get waxed? She gets waxed. So... Yeah, we just shot that. That was that day's filming. was just those two. Right. Easy stuff. And it's like, go home. This was a day all by itself, too. It's like, we just had Mike and Ty. Ty's in his own bed at his own place. Shot with his own gun. <laughs> For some, some reason, he's got his gun there. He's, at, he's self-quarantining in this scene. That's <laughs> <laughs> fucking dirty. What I said, or <laughs> it's the times, man. I went, I took my COVID test yesterday because I to take one because I got oh, my hernia heard, surgery. Yeah, that's right. So they make you take it, and they're pre -op. Like right now. I'm self quarantining technically, so I hope you're not sick. <laughs> so <laughs> and see all the stuff with he's not actually there, right? Because we had to get rid of him because we were waiting for her to show up, and she didn't show up. It's like, well, let's just shoot this scene and get him out of here. And it was daylight out, so you can see there's a green hue on them because mm. we had like Kelly and Patrick on the other side of that window holding up the green screen to cover the sign. Mm. And she's looking in, like she sneaks in while they're partying and dicking around. And kills the old lady. And kills the old lady while they're partying and dicking it around. Um, and then Danny kills her. And, and we shot this stuff with Danny on the day that we also shot him and Hannah back when Hannah was playing Twinkie because originally the master was going to be played by this chick, Kate, uh, who work, does all the theater stuff with everybody, but then she backed out yeah. because um, it came to like, hey, we're going to do this now, the day that we're at Patrick's house. Mm -hmm. Um and she like she we even had her for a day where she came in and for her her and Mike and me and Patrick they came over to my place and we rehearsed all of her scenes and Mike's scenes. Right. So like she was in, and then she wasn't because she I think she wanted more time. Right. Everyone wants more time. What was that all about? <laughs> <laughs> like she wanted to dick around with the sword because she was gonna be doing this with the sword. Like they fight with the sword. 
Like, I wrote a sword fighting scene. That and doesn't it, happen. And it was super gay. It doesn't happen. Yeah. It's not super gay. It's just... It's not very There's gay. not a fight scene. It's she not. just runs at her like she's going to fucking run her through, but it doesn't happen. Spoiler alert. <laughs> she takes the wedding ring in and out of focus. I did that on purpose because it's artistic and independent. Right. <laughs> very artistic. And this is Casey's very original rap song. It's actually two parts. The first part we used during your scene where you guys are walking away at the front. Uh -huh. Like that whole song has that intermixed with this. And Greg's like, well, let's just take that out of there, use it there, and then we'll just use <clears> this <throat> stuff here. Because I like, this is the first movie that we had where it's all original music from Casey. Because right. prior to that, it was like popular music. So in this scene, I had my temp track was the party rock anthem. Okay. From L L M F A O. Right. And I'm like, Casey, give me one of these. <laughs> and that's what it gave me. It's not quite the party rock anthem, but it works. It works very well. And now the night is over. And everyone's dead. Ty's dead. Uh, what was Olivia character's name? Georgia. Georgia's dead. Yep. It would be nice to have a nice box, a cheese box set. A cheese box set. A cheese box set. set. I love guy. cheese boxes. Some guy's walking by my window. Creepy. Thought he was in the movie. <laughs> and she's like, he finds out the, oh yeah, and Ally's character dies too. And he's coming back and he's changing out of his ninja costume <laughs> back into his suit. <laughs> Because, spoiler alert, he's the guy that kills, uh... What was Allie's name's character? Abby. Okay. Abby. The one thing... <coughs> every time I watch this, when he holds the gun up to shoot her, the sound effect is off. Is it? Yeah. I don't know how that happened. Like, there are some times when you would render something and it would shift certain things. Huh. Or maybe you didn't notice that you shifted it when you shifted something else and it was right. locked into it or something. Well, master recuts are all the rage these days. <laughs> Deep fakes, right? The, the never before seen. See, that was that. So what we did was we went and we shot this and we ran up and we shot the part where they're in the cars and they drive away. Uh -huh. And when they pull up. And then I think we had to go back here for one more thing like oh I forgot this we need to go back sorry guys like Dakota was up super this was an early day this was like hey everyone show up at 6 7 o'clock so that we can go I think this was like we went and picked up Robert for this right oh was this that day I think Patrick stayed the night at my place like I think we might have been filming the day before, and Patrick came, um, and we, and he just stayed at my place, and he slept out in the living room. And then uh, we, because we had to go and pick up uh, Robert, who was also drunk at the time, when we picked him up, and we went through and McDonald's, and, and uh, oh, and there's some fucking like bum guy asking us for money, and Patrick fucking cussed his ass out, I was like get the fuck out of here, or something like that. And, you know, there's another incident where Patrick cussed out another bum when we were hanging out after the read-through, the script read-through. Um, me, him, uh, Allie, and Casey all shot over to, like, uh, Bruce Brothers. Mm -hmm. And then we went over to Calneva. And some bum was in Calneva sitting down, and he was talking to us, and Patrick's like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> it was really fucking intense. But then Patrick eventually, like, this is like, sorry, and I like, gave him, like, his half a beer that he still had left or something. I don't know. Some wacky things happened on here. I remember everyone's impressed by this scene because it looks like we're actually at a police station. Right. I remember you were impressed. An office. Morning. At somebody's, uh... This was where Allie worked. Yeah. And I remember they just went for it right here, and he's, like, slams him right up against that. And, like, I'm positioned to, like... So that's where that uh, little conference room is, and Allie's office was like here. So like I'm looking here because we just have the camera set up. Right. <laughs> and he slams her, and I see her head like shoot up, like <gasps> <laughs> because this is like a an office building. Okay. 
you know, like an office park, as so they like say. after hours? Yeah, like after hours, and it seemed very empty, and that was the same building where the fucking uh, Reno Film Collective also held their offices uh, years later. Gotcha. Like when I went and talked to that fucking guy, and it's like, oh, I've been here before. Like I rode my bike down there. Did I rode my bike down there? No, I think I drove down there. No, back in these days, I rode it down there to film. So, like, I rode my bike down here to film with those guys. <laughs> ah, back in the day before you had a driver's license. And see, this was another one of those last film days because a lot of Patrick's stuff he shaved for. Like, we were done with his goatee. We were done with the main Patrick stuff. So, he's, like, completely shaved here. And, uh... This was one of those final days. It's like, okay, let's go film this. So they were both over at my place. And we said, there's the Maverick right here on Stead Boulevard. And we're just, like, they're doing a stakeout. Right. So they have their first kiss here in this scene. Because I wrote two flashback scenes. The landmine scene, which just didn't work. That looks goofy as fuck. Yeah. And then this scene. Where they first kiss. <laughs> And he goes for the tongue here. Look, <laughs> did you see that? <laughs> it's reflexive though. Like if you're trying to do like a real kiss, eh? And see, this was one that that same last day where those two were talking on the the back of Casey's house. Right. We shot this stuff first, and a lot of times, like I was out doing stuff. Like I, I was at work, or I had to be somewhere, and like people would just meet me at my apartment. I'd leave it open, or like, hey, right. the key's here. So there would just be people at my place sometimes when I would go. It's like, oh, we're all here? All right, let's go shoot this. Um, and I think I ended up leaving the uh, the CB right. mic in this truck. And this is just right around here, the Silver Lake Sky Vista. Yeah, there's plenty of like just random ass roads to drive around on out here. I mean, that was a lot of what it was. It's like, oh, we have a car scene. Let's go drive somewhere yeah. and shoot this car scene. And I think it looks, honestly, like this looks better in a real car actually driving down the road. Than doing a... Than doing the green, green screen. screen. Well, like... And I mean, I, th I, I think we did this stuff in... Um, street Tough. In Street Tough. All, that's the only one that doesn't look good. And it's because... The lighting is a little poor. The lighting was the problem. It wasn't with consistent. Patrick and, and you don't uh, like it? The one coming up here? It's not awful. Well, we'll talk about it. I'm sure. We'll talk about it. But no, the one... Oh, and here we go. This is the good stuff. Whose Ooh. car was this? Was this Dakota's car? I don't remember whose car that was. It's there's like my, a black... There's my truck. There's my Tahoe that I wrecked. <laughs> and that was my car right there, too. No, no. I didn't have that car. Oh, come on, cheeks. Stay together. You know, it's funny that we go to this one, because aren't there closer ones, like, driving up, like, over by Donner? I mean, I don't know. And one that looks just it. like I this, I don't know how too. much closer it is. I think it's closer. We figured <laughs> that because this is, a like, a lower traffic area, that this would be more abandoned for us to do what we Meanwhile, wanted. we see all kinds of cars parked there oh, and driving uh, back and forth, was, dude. I mean, it was pretty busy. And you put the big-ass... Air compressor in one of the stalls. Yeah. Did anyone go in there and go to the bathroom? Yeah. Not once. Not once. I was willing to I just some, leave the guts there, some, but you're like, no, we should clean this up just in case. Or yeah. you or Patrick or whoever it was. Yeah, I didn't want to make a big old mess and wreck something that was kind of low class, I think. Is that you guys over there dicking around at the truck, or is that somebody else that can't just go use the bathroom? Uh, I don't remember. I know I that it was it. it was a big... Uh, like, we gotta shoot this before someone comes in. And I'm surprised no one did. Yeah. Like, look, there's houses there. Cars are going by. Like, literally, he's throwing him around and dragging him and throwing him in a trunk and shit. Like, there's a car that goes by. What's to stop any of these cars from pulling in while we're doing that? The car might have even pulled in while we were filming that scene. I think. Like, the tail happen. end of it. Yeah. Um, we got some looks when, they, when he was throwing him in the trunk. What we need is a guy that's got like a big pole that says filming in progress and they're just waving it at cars. That was uh That was what your that trick was. was. An unimpressive gag. So what you did was you filled up your uh, compressor up to the whatever, right? 
and then you shot air through a tube on Dakota's neck. Yeah, it didn't work out as well because I didn't have. You were afraid have, of something. Right? I was afraid of something, and like we, too much pressure or something. Yeah. I was afraid it would be too much. So instead, it looks like we just spit some Kool Aid onto the. It kind of looks like that, and it's not real thick. It's real aspirated. It would have been better to do like a like a what blood, you, like a blood blade gag. That would have looked better, I think. Um, we wanted blood. I want, a, I I want a lot, every movie I make. I want lots yeah. of blood, and I'm always disappointed with the amount of blood that we get. And that's not no, your it's fault because it's, or anyone's it's fault. Hard it's just to get it right. What you needed was you and like five other guys. Well, yeah, that's why there's. Oh, here's the it's gut so thing. Good. It goes like. from out of focus to in focus, and a real nice song, <laughs> and like. It keeps They're a flushing, pinky, but I mean, it is fresh, so it looks great, dude. He fucking gutted him like that's one of the best effects in that's any of That's probably movies. one of the best ones that I've like. And this is just done. a crime movie, and like I could have used something like that, not in the dark. Like that movie needed to be fucking soaked in blood, and there's like no blood in it. And I was thinking about this. I was thinking about how my movie is like. If I were to tell you what my movie was about, not in the dark, it's like oh, a bunch of kids get lost in the woods and the vampires hunting them, but really. That's not what the movie is. Right. The movies, you have some people dealing with life problems and they're thrown into a situation and there's like all these other characters that are doing things. Like you're experiencing a section of a person's life, of these people's lives in my or movies. Something fucked up happens. Like what is this movie about? This movie is about a bunch of detectives that are protecting a little girl from a satanic cult. But that's really not what's going on in this movie. You've got these detectives with fucked up lives and they're dealing with their own personal problems and there's this little girl in it and there is a cult and like there are just things happening in this movie but it's not just like oh it's just a movie about this stuff it's it's, it's a cutaway of these people's lives right sure <laughs> Don't if you say didn't sure. say, and if you didn't say fags and Fags is the key, dude. Fags is the key. It's like uh, Robert Aldrich directed The Dirty Dozen, and they said he would have won the Oscar if he wouldn't have put the scene. Have you seen that movie? Uh, I don't. They've got a they've got a while. bunch of Nazis in an underground bunker that they've locked in, and there's a bunch of air ports, like air holes where air can come through, and they pull the tops off of those, and they're dumping gasoline down, they're dumping bags of grenades down, and Jim Brown. Um, he's got all the grenades and he's pulling the pin and he's throwing it into the air tube and throwing it into the next one, throwing it into the next one to just blow up all those people down there. And they said that Robert Aldrich and that movie would have won like an Oscar if they hadn't have taken that out or if they had, uh, hadn't have left it in. He's like, no, leave that shit in because war is hell and that's what this is. So it's like, there's real things here, man. Remember Patrick couldn't open the door. <laughs> he couldn't bust through the door. Like he does this, and then well, right after just, that is the, the the blooper where he's like, "What the fuck?" And then he just opens the door. <laughs> so this was one. Of, this was one of your first gags, right? This was the first day where uh, where we and this was another one of those days where we were waiting on her. Yeah, couldn't get a hold of her, and like I can't make the call, so Kelly makes it and gets her there. And like this isn't an easy place to explain how to get. It's like, oh, you gotta go down this street and there's like a dirt road and we're like one of the houses down there. <laughs> like, it, I don't know, like this is before the days, like, I mean, you had Google Maps, I believe, but like... It was early and it wasn't as reliable. Wasn't as reliable, it wasn't, wasn't as easy and service wasn't as easy and, and data yeah. and everything else like that was different. Yeah, this was this was a fun day. This was awesome, dude. This Such was an this awesome probably, location. We had everybody there. Everybody was having yeah. fun. And when we got pizzas and did we know. have pizzas? Yeah, I don't remember having yeah, pizzas. I don't remember pizza. like a thing of water because yeah. those two. Somebody I don't remember who went, but somebody went and got pizza. Hey, look, there's the old lady. <laughs> <laughs> a whole group of fucking crew. And, uh, uh, my Carl? Wife's, yeah, Carl and... Carl! Jim. Carl! Carl! <laughs> <laughs> no, Carl! We lose Carl here in a Carl. few seconds. <laughs> Carl that kills out. people! <laughs> hey, 
Chiefs. That's that moment where he had to be shown how to light up a cigar. Oh, right. yeah. That was early on. I had to show him how uh, how that worked. Care for some coffee? Yeah. Fuck me. Um, I love coffee, and I haven't had any today. This was another one of those last days. How many times do I have to say last days? Yeah, because it was after he shaved. After he shaved, and like, this is him and him. Oh, and you gave me the pigeon, I think, the yeah, day before. Yeah, that was, that was, I probably did the most work on this film. Like, for me versus other films that right, we've done. Right, right. Like, this one had, the, I think, the most cool things that I did. Well, it was like, because you've been hitting me up, like, hey, I want to do something. I want to help out, if I yeah, can help out. Yeah, I want to do something, and then... There goes another then guy. <laughs> the same my guy. Window. <laughs> the same He's guy. He's going the other direction. <laughs> Guest spots on this That podcast. pigeon probably <laughs> tasted... Uh, no, thank you. No, just black. Just black. I, I, I wanted that you to make a pigeon that he could eat. Uh, there was just a pigeon. I could, what was I going to make it out of? I don't know. That's what your job to figure out how to do special effects. I didn't have a lot of time to do that one. More time than any other movie. If it's not here, sure. I mean, Perfect. it just got done brewing. Sometimes it's not hot enough. Hot enough? Oh, that's hot. So you made that pigeon out of what was it, like bologna or something? I... Literally, I, took, I sat I took, with I took a <laughs> foam. I took a foam bird. Right, we went and picked that up at Hobby Lobby. At Hobby Lobby, and then we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's the famous prison rave scene. There's your dad, who now works at a prison. <laughs> he teaches them, right? He was uh, telling me that last time he came here to podcast. At prison, yeah. Or his tattoos right here. Um. So he cuts his dick off right there. Does he cut his dick off or does he cut his nuts? No, he cuts his dick off because he's like, I'll cut your fucking dick off. And then, and then he drops his pants. And her joke is, oh, it's too late. You already have or something like that. But see, there's a lot going on right here. Sure. But I mean, it's, it's very dense. Like, so that, that last day that I was talking about, that flashback scene with the pigeon eating, mm -hmm. I, I got sick that day. Like the, the morning began and I didn't feel so good. And I ended up getting, like, like had food poisoning or something. And after that day, like, after we got filming that day, like, I ended up, like, throwing up the rest of the night and just, you know, having that 24-hour flu. Probably pre-coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> From now on, every time I've been sick, retroactively, it was coronavirus. So I want to know where she gets this gun. Her gun. Her, yeah, the gun that she uses right now. God gave it to her. Like, where was she holding it? Because she doesn't have a holster or anything like that. I mean, yeah. I mean, this is a... Because we have... So she the doesn't have... she it, uses... So she's probably got it in, in the back of her waist skirt. Like most dudes put the gun... You see in movies, they put it in the back of their waistband. It's a six-inch security... See, look, she six, pulls it out right there. 357. She had it in her car. That you've never seen... It, no, no, no. Bullshit. That movie is... Or that gun is in the movie from the beginning. You see that gun at the beginning of the movie when you first see her in the truck. I just want to say that that's probably my favorite piece. The it's very artistic. The bullet holes and the and the cut back and forth. It's it's beautiful. <laughs> like, seriously, every time I see it, it makes me cry inside a little bit. That's it's awesome. It's just like it's awesome. Oh. Yeah, there was that, that Dutch chip hill and then the sword running through. Because that was supposed to be a big ass fucking fight. Big Which ass fucking sword fucking fight. fucking awesome. And I remember, like. But neither one of them were comfortable with it. I think Donna was okay. But. I mean, it was just a matter of, like, that's why Kate quit, is because, like, we didn't have time to rehearse it. Yeah. And honestly, like, for me, the movie's not about that sword fight scene. It's not. Alright, here we are at the green screen, skipping past everything, being sick, your pigeon. The the prison rape scene that we shot at European Fitness and the Mexican <laughs> cleaning ladies were like, what is going on? <laughs> and and the I girl say, and the girl who allowed Patrick to sh let us film in there was like, what are you doing in there? Like she was freaking out. Were you there? Yeah, you were there. I was there. Okay, you were there. We because were gonna we were going to put the, the pedophile the pedophile scarring on there, and that was. It was my first attempt at trying to do like a like a uh, the like skin prosthetic. The idea was right. I, it was just the the way it got done was too thick. Like I I, I should have made it much more um, 
like light detail. And, and it just just more uh, more subtle. I, I should have gone for subtlety, and I went for like this really deep, really gougy looking thing, and it should have been more of a subtle, scarry looking thing. And well, and then the color of the like Mike's a white dude. And the color of the latex is yeah, like the brown. Yeah, the natural latex color was a little white. And here's that, the Danny with his face shaved. This is the only time we've seen him with his face shaved. And so Did he brief. shave it for the end of the film? Yeah, he shaved it for right, right this. So, around. like, we went and we picked him up to go film the scene. And he came out. We didn't know who he was. <laughs> well, because, I mean, he's got, a like, a nice burly beard. He does. He's got a big uh, lumberjack. <laughs> And so he shaved, and it's like, who are you? And I guess that's what everyone else was like in his life, too. He's like, who's this guy? Because he looks like somebody totally different. And this guy right here was Patrick's, like, roommate boss or something like that. Right. And that was the house where we filmed the pigeon eating scene. It was that guy's house. Oh, okay. And he fucking stabs him. And he's like, what the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? Like, I wish I could have gotten more. Like, look at that baby face on fucking Danny. And he was younger than us, too. But when he had the beard, I always thought he was, like, an older guy. But then he was younger than us. And, you know, there's actually another time where he doesn't have a beard. And it's it for the book. cast party at, uh, for Street Meets Pavement. So okay. we had a cast party at Dakota's apartment. Right. And there are pictures of it. And he doesn't have a beard in that, in those pictures. And he's only got the, he's got the mustache. So here in this scene, he's got the mustache. In the pigeon eating scene, he's got the the porn mustache. We're filming. Um, or not filming. We're recording. <laughs> so this is the green screen stuff that we were talking about. Yeah, and see the the blue haze. I could maybe you could uh, attribute that to like some moonlight or street light. It's a little it's a little super imposy. For me, it feels very uh, Donnie Darko. Like, it well, feels weird. Every time I watch something nowadays, I'm always trying to look for, like, a little edge. And sometimes you see it. A lot of times you see it. But we... So we went and we filmed this out at Danny's parents' house, like, at South <laughs> Meadows was, in their garage. You were there, I know. You were there, and we had you set up we the... Set up the green screens and the lights. And, and we had it even. We had it even so that Greg... We were able to actually put something... There. I'm like a picture on the back. Did yeah. we have a light? Because it does have like a blue hue to it. We were using um, every. We were using the lights that we had. I think they were like spotlights, like uh, work floodlights. Yeah, but it looks like he's got like we blue were right there. Up on, we were shining them up on the uh, green screen though. So we, this blue is just whatever. That's, I don't that's know where reflecting. it came from. It's like the reflection. I mean, it looks like it's coming through the car. Um, and these extreme close-ups, it looks like... Hey, there's Stead Boulevard. <laughs> no, I don't think that's Stead. Was that Stead? I think that's Red Rock. Maybe. It I think like that was Maverick. Red Rock. It looked like the Maverick. No, uh, I think it was that Circle C. Maybe. I think it was that Circle C. And these these takes are so quick, we're going to be talking over them. But the the green screen footage back there was in black and white because Patrick was like, let's do it in black and white. Let's put right. that in black and white. So that was black and white. Like, their it conversation been, wasn't black and white, but the, the driving footage was black and white. And it might have been better to... Do you think, like, does this look... Like, this looks good. I think it looks great. I think it would have taken a lot longer for him to die. Oh, than that? Like, in real life? Yeah, that's movie death. That's yeah. That's a movie death for We're sure. We're not gonna sit here for an hour. <laughs> no, it wouldn't have taken. It wouldn't have taken an hour, but it would have taken literally like over over a minute before he passed out. Anyway. So this is the second time I shot this because before I shot it with Hannah because Hannah was playing Twinkie, and then Jessica had already played the chick that's blowing Robert, but it's like you know, but she has the she had different hair color back then, and right. then she's got the purple hair here. So like forever, Twinkie's gonna have purple hair. See, this is back at that day where everyone was there and Robert, or not Robert, Danny, and Hannah was there as Twinkie, and we shot that. So I have footage of that where Twinkie, and she didn't know how to drive. What's with these people that don't know how to fucking drive? She never driven a car before. Wow. And I think we, uh, whose car was she driving? She was driving his car, I think. Oh, wow. 
and she'd never driven before, and we were driving around in Cold Springs in there, and then this is just up here instead, kind of by where I live. Not one of the last days. <laughs> this stuff right here, also not one of the last days. This is the big reveal where you find out that uh, the captain is actually the cult leader. He's the secret master. Right. Because Hannah plays the master, secret master. I love that shot. I think that was a script again. <laughs> that shot, for those of you taking count, take a shot. And that looks like a moon. I'm not sure if it was a moon. It might have been a street light. Right. 666. I love that little gag that I did where I put that in there. <laughs> just little things to keep it's the a movie. Little cheesy, just to keep your attention to the movie. Like, oh, like, oh they're doing something different. Look at that. And this, this was one of the last days. <laughs> I think this was the big party day scene. And then uh, we got uh, Mike out there to film. Were you here for this day? Um, you showed up for the after party, though, on this day at the Calneva, right? Yeah. Because you were at the concert. Or no, the play. You were at the musical. That's the real gun. That's the hero. No, that's the fake gun. No, it's not. No, that's the fake gun. Is it? Yeah, that's the fake gun. It looks really good. It's it looks it is bigger. It's a little bit more. The the fake one uh, is. It's a, it's, it's a bit bigger than. Is it a little the, bit longer than the real one? Okay. Not necessarily longer, but like wider. A little bulkier. A little bulkier. Yeah. Um, but that day we had Mike there, and I kept having him move, and he got all fucking shitty with me about Flanagan? having to move. Yeah. Because we were parked right here, and then he, oh, I told him to park right. out of the way, and then. I was like, oh, you know what? It'd be better if we had him over here. And I'm like, Mike, can you park over here? And he got all shitty with me about it. Right. So I'm like, okay, well, we're almost done. Let's, let's just do this, okay? Yeah. Well, and then after get that. frustrated sometimes. And, like, as, you know, you're the boss, really. Like, as a director, as the, the, the DP, whatever you want to be at that point. Mm -hmm. Like, people get frustrated. I've been frustrated when we're shooting. Like, what the fuck? Like, we can't be serious. We can't shoot this. <laughs> we can't. You know what I mean? We can't. We have to do it 40 fucking times. Come on, quit dicking around. Deliver the lines. Like, be the person. Think about it. Are you playing or are you trying to be this character? Right. Like, are you fucking around? So I, I get it. And it's easy to get frustrated and you don't know who to take it out on. Mm -hmm. And usually the director... Yeah, well, yeah, the guy, the guy that's like... That's going to take that flat and, you know, especially like at our level, like you're not going to go tell Spielberg, hey, look, motherfucker, I don't want to move my car again. <laughs> but, you know, this is... Is this where you were trying to film the... Uh, like where you wanted the, the mine scene to be? Or is this... No, I don't remember that because I've only seen the. Well, this is the, the ca remember because when I first when you first met up with us at my place to talk about what we were gonna right. do, I was like, we want like a, a cage, right? All right, and, and 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 we were gonna look into building a cage or finding a place with a cage, <laughs> right? And uh, Kelly eventually was like, I got a dog kennel at my parents' yeah, house. Yeah, no, and and that's this basically was, it. Yeah, I mean, this is literally perfect. And he wakes up in the fucking <laughs> the doghouse with the fucking the choke chain on. <laughs> I don't know why he doesn't take that thing What's off. He got there? He's got um. What's he got there? His wedding ring from Georgia, so he knows she's dead, and he grabs him by the head and punches him through the fence. And then this is. A, Ooh, look at that runic script. Somebody, I don't remember who this is. It might be Danny. It might be me. That's turning those pages, but it's just supposed to be an acolyte. Of his, I would have loved it if I could have covered that thing and just blood. You could see that that's the last of the blood that I had. Yeah. To kind of make the uh, pentagram. And this was fun. This was a lot of fun. The way that seen this Greg so made it look. And I was really drunk at the premiere. <laughs> the pre you haven't watched this movie since the premiere. I haven't watched the whole thing. I like the like I bring it up with people. And go, oh, hey, we made this movie a while ago, and I'll bring it up on YouTube and show them some stuff. It's funny, because there was this chick that I reached out to to do makeup, to do this makeup. And Danny came over one day, because she was supposed to meet with us to, to go and over it. you guys it. ended up doing it, didn't you? Yeah, because she, she like, because I could see it. on, like, Facebook, and she's like, oh, hey, I'm going to go work out tonight, or yoga, or whatever. And then I'd be texting her and be like, we're still meeting up, right? And she's like, oh, is that tonight? And, and it's like, like, well, fuck, like me, and, like, like me and Danny watched, like, two movies waiting for her to show up or something like that. Yeah. 
And so uh, we just did, yeah we just did it ourselves. We put like the contacts in him and put the the horns on him. And I like took a picture and sent it to the chick, and she's like, "Oh yeah, no, that looks good." <laughs> well, this is weird and fucked up. This is weird and fucked up. That's me and Mike lifting her and walking with her. Good old forced levitation. And it's funny because she was talking to Iris, and she's like, "Oh, I've never smoked before, or anything like that." And, like, me and Patrick and Danny were discussing, like, oh, we need to have her smoke to get the smoke coming out of her mouth. Like, her insides are burning right here. <laughs> so we walk over to her and what she's like, did, oh, yeah. Uh, what did she eat? Did you guys use, like, a vape? A cigarette. Or just, like, See, they didn't have vapes back then. Oh, that's right. That was, like, that it, was very it, fringy. Like, vaping was very fringe at that time. Right. It was, like, like the next thing coming. It was, like, the RDA only. Like, you had to actually drip it on the cotton in the thing. Mm-hmm. Like, they didn't have the tank atomizers, and they didn't have the, <laughs> the jewels. Like, now you could fuck. I'm talking about easy. Yeah, right? no. That, like, that, like, fruity, no nicotine. Like right, and it looks easy. like fire. Like, fire is somewhere when all the smoke comes oh, yeah. out of people. Yeah, absolutely. If we had a vape uh, thing, it would have, like, had a shit ton of smoke coming out of her mouth. But yeah, no. So like, they had to teach her how to do it. To do it, we might have done it twice. <laughs> She's like, I've never smoked a cigarette before, and we forced her to smoke a cigarette. And they're really fighting. I was gonna the say that looks like a pretty good fight. Yeah, they're really beating the shit like out of each other. It looks like fighting. It hits them pretty good. Because they're both like, let's just go for it. Like he, really, <laughs> he's like, well, and that that's thing. it's gonna look the best. And you know, like I was watching some. Uh, some things about like Hong Kong film. Oh, here comes my the last uh, one of the last gags I made. Yes, was the arrows, uh, the cut arrows. And you hadn't met Kelly yet either, right? Uh, that was the first time I met Kelly when she came to the shop. Although no, you should have met her the day where we hung Robert. At she Kelly. was there, but I didn't interact. You didn't with her act with her, okay? Because I was busy. I was like, that was like my busiest day. Was no, at the house. I remember. That was, a weird gag, but it came off really good. The arrow through the mouth. Like, it's it great. was weird the way he had to do it, but I think it looked good. It looks great. On film. And see, those two interacting, they're not together because this is a separate day. Right. All this is, this is a separate day. And, she, like, the bat comes out of nowhere. Ball it's, buster it's, in, the, in the scabbard. It's a, uh... It's a reference to the movie Only God Forgives where there's like this retired cop that comes back and he's always pulling like a... It's not a machete. It's like a, a tie... or a, Is it a tie? Well, yeah, like a tie bladed oh, like weapon that. thing. And he just pulls it out of nowhere all the time and like just chop people's people, hands off yeah. and shit. This one was... This was a, a weird day too. This, we got a flat tire, remember? Yeah. On the way down? Um... And I saw a post about that, like, on my yearly Facebook, like, back in 2014. So that just happened a couple days ago, six years back. Gotcha. There's something I want to talk about back there. It went by so quickly, though. Um, what about the fighting? Before going all out. the fighting. Oh, so when I wrote the script, um, Pigeon, I wrote that for Mike Robinson, who was Kelly's boyfriend at the time. Oh, okay. Um, and Pigeon gets a Molokov cocktail smashed into his face and that's how he dies i remember talking about that and i just that would have been the best thing ever i couldn't think of a real <laughs> way to do that right. so we did the bow and arrow thing but um i remember like we had a meeting with like three people that was when i first met kate and i talked we met with mike and met with justine justine was going to play twinkie and all three of those people ended up not being in the movie. But, like, I guess Mike was like, the script's just too much. There's just too much. Yeah. Like, what a pussy. <laughs> and then, like, Flanagan, who took the part over, I guess he, Mike's previous girlfriend, cheated on him with Flanagan. And then Kelly is working with Flanagan, and Kelly's Robinson's boyfriend, or girlfriend. So, like, one of the, those last days when they're working together and we're driving back, it dawns on him, like... Who this like, person is. Right, because we've all talked about it previously. Right. Like, it was a thing, because we all know the history, we all know each other, we've all known each other for years. And we're in the car driving back from the Rancho Haven, and he's like, who's your boyfriend? 
And she's like, oh, Mike Robinson. But he doesn't say anything. There's not a conversation about this. But, you know, those in the know, which is everybody except for him, right? we know why he's asking. It was, it was a fucked up funny thing. And then, um, and of course, she ends up leaving Mike and, like, hooking up with Patrick after this. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I'm not airing too much dirty laundry. No one listens I mean, to this anyway. I mean, this is Hollywood. <laughs> but she didn't. She didn't leave Mike for Patrick. It was right. just a relationship that was on on its way out, and like it started with this movie because they all we all worked together on streaming's payment, and then with God Salt, Mike chose not to work on it. But Kelly is still in it, and she's in a lot. She's one of the main characters. Right. So she's always with us, and then they go to make the next movie. Um, like one of Patrick's scripts, right. which they never filmed. I've got that footage on my computer. In fact, see, there's the smoke gag again. But it was it was at that time, and my, I guess Mike was in it, and he was getting real hostile about some shit. Like they were kind of having fun a little bit in between cuts, right. and he got all shitty, and everyone was like, "Ooh." I wasn't there for any of right, it. This right. is all secondhand story, but it was right around that time where they ended up breaking up and she ended up getting with Patrick for a little bit and, and everything was kind of sketchy then. Gotcha. They ended up not really being together. But here we are. Yeah, no. Uh, we drove up here to the Peavine and this is where you got we got a flat tire on the way back because it was a fucking sketchy like It was rocky. Like a ditch like, thing that we were driving through. Why did we go so far? This is where Patrick wanted to shoot it. it That's was, right. We Patrick, were following him and he was in his dad's Jeep. Right. And he had uh, He, he had, had Maria, Iris, Iris and, and yep. Is Kelly there? No, I Kelly's think, not there. No, Kelly came. She was up there. She was up she there? She just wasn't in. Okay. At that point. She wasn't on the screen. Maybe we were working that day she earlier was, or something. I don't know. She was. She came up to hang out with Maria and Iris while we were shooting other Who stuff. Who had Danny? Danny was up there, too. Did we have... We didn't have Danny. Danny didn't go up there that day. Danny's stuff got filmed on a different day. Oh, did it? He was not there at the same time. That's why everything's cut back and forth between the two... Between Patrick and Danny, they're never actually there together. Really? Not at that point. Huh. Because it was just Patrick and Iris and me and you and Kelly. Kelly. And Kelly just came. I think she came up just for the giggles. And Jesus! Here we got the Jesus stuff. Is my friend. And he's doing the, uh, the Bigfoot walk through the trees. The Patterson footage Bigfoot walk. <laughs> okay. Um... And we shot, we didn't go to Peavine to shoot this stuff. We needed a lake to have Jesus come out of the lake. Which I, we had him walking backwards. I like the way you guys just like <laughs> splattered blood all over Patrick's face for that shot. <laughs> because he like quick comes out and blasts the little girl. Which was kind of a rough I just had a handful of blood. Yeah, you just went like that and whacked it at him. And so we went up to the Boca, Boca Lake. Okay. Just right outside of Reno. To film the Jesus stuff. And probably that scene too. Because the other stuff we did film. And then Jesus comes in and he says a line that he has in the Bible. He <laughs> didn't write any new material for Jesus. Sure. And we rewind the wipe, movie. Wipe the sins of, of the God soul. Like away. Ev everything we just watched. Because he kills the little girl, right? He realizes the only way to, to prevent hell from happening... Is by killing the girl. Not killing himself, not killing... Because he can't kill... Yeah, he can't Danny. kill Danny. So he kills the girl. Alright, and then it rewinds the back. of this power, right? It, it was the thing... It, it's like if you were... It's like in Looper, where he kills himself. And right. prevents Bruce Willis. From killing the mom and making the guy the bad guy. And, yeah. Right. Making the kid into the bad guy. So... So it's like a... Like, like a, at the end redemption story. Like where you get to a point... Now the guy has the opportunity to do the right thing up front. But it's a bad thing. But it's a bad thing. He has to do a bad thing. <clears throat> he has to do to a do bad a thing good to thing. get yeah. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. And it always you know, is. Star Black Trek guy the won. <laughs> that would never fly today. That would never fly. That's just a joke. Because but he, he was is that guy. Build, he he is that guy. Build ahead of white guy one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's funny because. Uh,
Oh, man, but it was so funny. It was, but... Anyways, here we are at the credits. Um, I did want to say... Oh, to recap... So we, we shot the two takes of, of those two together. The, the first one that happens is where she's like, Hey, you want to get out of here? And he says yes. And then they go back to his place and they bang while his wife is working at the bar. Um, and everyone else goes off and does their thing. Right. So on the cutback, on the cutback, he has a total recall of everything that's happened. He goes, holy shit. He knows what's going to happen. And, and right. And he's like, and she's like, oh, do you want to get out of here? And he's like, no. You know, he has that moment where he says no. And so it's like affecting the course of events from that point forward. Yeah. So instead of allowing those two to fuck off. They're the backup. They're there. Let's all go together. And then maybe and, we can stop this thing up front. Right. And uh, I don't think he actually does. Like, he, he stops a lot of other things from happening, but I don't think he actually is able to stop her from dying. I think she still dies. It might not necessarily be him that kills her, but in, in my... Uh, in the universe it exists. In the universe, in, in my mind, the way things play out, because... We made Street Meets Pavement before this movie, but it takes place after. And even though I had no inkling of God Salt back then, there is a he does have like a drug induced haze where he sees like a devil appear at him. So like through some weird fucking coincidental happenstance, <laughs> he Cheese's character actually did live through a devil thing, and and did see that devil. And so it, it connects connects the dots right and then I do have a third script where Cheese actually isn't dead okay. from Street Meets Pavement he actually ends up living but that's an awesome script if you ever read it have you read it which one is it is that the name it's all good things like all good things must come to an end right I didn't read that one did you where he's the bum and he doesn't have any lines because he's because yeah. at the end of Street Meets Pavement he gets shot in the neck so in all good things he's a homeless person he's never named Cheese Right. And he doesn't speak at all, but he has like a scar, like a bullet scar on his neck. Right. And he's just kind of like, did you read that? Where him and the chick are trying, like, like oh, he's, you know he's at a bar. I remember reading something about it. Maybe you sent me just like a little piece. I don't think I have that. It's one. a really awesome fucking script. That one, that's one I wrote with my brother. And, uh. I think I remember talking about it. And then we will, and like immediately after that. You wrote uh, Crime America 2. No, no, no. It, no, it was Night Moves, then Crime America 2. That's right. And then Street But Tops. I mean, it was like, boom, boom, boom. He's like, we can't do this one because we don't have Patrick. I, I remember, like, that was right after God Sold, and you were, you wanted to do this. But no, you, God. You and Patrick if were you, on the fucking screen. If you take me already. back that far, it's a whole nother different set of scripts. I'm sure. But. Oh no no because that no that was clandestiny. Oh, that's right. Clandestiny is the one where we didn't have that Patrick because he because after God saw when Patrick was going through his stuff with Kelly, he I think he was trying to be somebody else and he's like I don't want to be cheese anymore. anymore. I don't want to be that guy anymore. Um, but the but like I do a bunch of back to back scripts so like. Right. Um, all Good Things was uh, after Get Fiasco, so I wrote Get Fiasco, and I wrote All Good Things, and then I wrote, like, Take My Hand, and I wrote, like, maybe another one in there, too. Yeah. Like, I have a bunch of scripts back to back. that way, and then moved off onto... Well, that, I've never made anything, and yeah. then it was Not in the Dark. What was the next thing that I made? Street Toast. Well, no, after... Instead of Get Fiasco, because we were going to make Get Fiasco. Right. But I'm talking about All Good Things being oh, yeah, the yeah. sequel to Street Meets Pavement. Gotcha. That's the trilogy where right, Cheese right, is a bring... bum. Yeah. Cheese is a bum, and like he's at a bar that gets burned down by a biker gang, but there's a baby left inside. Like The biker gang takes off, mm -hmm. they leave one guy behind to burn down the bar and with the people inside. But Cheese is there, the bum Cheese, the shot, uh, shot out fucking... Right, just... On the done. fringe, done cheese, and he kills the biker guy. Can't save the parents, um, but he saves the kinda, baby. Kind of like an old boy. Kind of like I'm, Lone Wolf and Cub, if you know what that is. I've never seen it. It's a old Japanese film where 
a dude and a little baby in a cart and they like go through hell and everything else. Mm. But he's got the little baby and as he's walking into the street with the little baby, they get hit by a car. Like the baby's fine, but he, and he can't talk and this chick gets out and is like, oh my God, oh my God, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And she ends up hooking up with him and the baby and they go after this biker gang. Oh, because they kidnap the mom. Okay. They kill the dad, kidnap the mom. So he wants to get the baby and get the baby back to the mom. And so they're kind of chasing after this biker gang for the rest of the movie. Such a good such a good fucking movie. And it and it ends tragically because at the end I guess I'll spoil it here, but at the end of Streaming's Pavement, um and in Streaming's Pavement Cheese has a son, right? Okay. And then he gets killed at the end of Streaming's Pavement, leaving behind a wife or girlfriend and a son. Right. So um, and then he ends up obviously not dying, but taking off and leaving and just be living this homeless life and he can't talk and he ends up hooking with, uh, hooking up with this chick in that movie and they bang in that movie and she gets pregnant. So by the end of that movie, she's really does die and the mom dies. So they, so she's got that baby and she's got a baby inside her and she goes to meet up with she's his ex old lady who has her son. So there's like three cheese kids. Three cheese babies? Three cheese babies. There's like the adopted baby and then the two half siblings. Gotcha. And so like I pictured like a, a future post apocalyptic world where those three kids are adults carrying mm-hmm. on the cheese legacy, like a Mad Max kind of thing. The Mad Max cheese. Cheese children. Cheese children. Yeah. Children of the cheese. That's uh, <laughs> children of the cheese. Yeah, post apocalypse Mad just Max. Make it world. like a really cheesy post apocalypse. Like well it's just it's just I think it's amazing that I, I was able to kind of spew forth this like these three cheese children out of this character that's been around now for fifteen years or so. Right. It's just fantastic. So that's the watch along that no one watched along with. That's okay. And I need to go cut out Maybe that joke. I, man, that was such a good joke, dude. It, well, you can't make good jokes anymore. Oh, uh, with especially for, right now today. For fear of being today you can't labeled. Labeled a hate monger and, and like the Hitler and you, you literally it can't was so mention anything. Funny because. That was way before we were even talking about this if, stuff. If yeah. I ever got anywhere and people started going back and listening to stuff, they would hear that and it would come out and my life would be ruined. Well, yeah, look at the stuff that we've said on this podcast. There's lots of life The way things are, no, the way things are now. Yeah, there's lots of life ruining things. That, no, just that us. one. Just that, that one. one. Yeah, no, you're like dead. <laughs> yeah, you can't make that joke while it's going on still. No. You can make that joke before it happened and be like oh man we made that joke whoops <laughs> people were cooler well, like, back okay, then nobody talks about Robert Downey Jr. doing blackface and, and uh, does he do blackface? Uh, Chaplin? Um, fucking no um, Tropic Thunder oh no they talk you about it me? they talk about it then they talk about it now just barely but like, yeah, why didn't anybody get mad about it? Because they did though did such a good job they did though, but it has to be explained also. Like Ben Stiller has to explain like why he does it and what it's what it signifies. Yeah, what they're talking about, like why. But I mean, they talk about it in the movie. The black dude in the movie is like, "I'm a black dude. I should have gotten that part. Right. Why did you get that part?" Right. So it's discussed in the movie. Right. And maybe it's because it's representative of that particular problem. I don't know. That's a subject for another day. It is. Last and year. I'll let you get out of here. We've been podcasting for two hours. It's been a pleasure. I've got hernia surgery. They're going to cut out your... Or are they just going to poke it back through the hole? <laughs> oh, no, I'm sure they're going to put in the... And then those little mesh... Chicken wire. Little chicken wire. <laughs> the yeah, chicken there's wire. A, a class action suit on those things. Is there? The mesh failures, yeah. Oh, man. Just put some tape on it. It's too late for me to get in on that, I guess, huh? I guess so. No, you have to have a problem with it. Oh, but there are people who don't have problems, right? I guess. Okay. I have a friend who had a hernia surgery. You've never had a hernia surgery? No. I don't know that I have one. I don't know how I'm sure is. you would know. Probably. I had a friend that had a hernia for a lot of years and finally got it fixed. I'm going on a year now. Yeah. They finally got it fixed and it's been like the best thing ever. 
Like, so it's, like, it's been over with, so. Well, anyway. it really bugged me the other day, and I was like, because I went in and they told me I had to wait because of Corona. Mm-hmm. And then the other day, it was like bothered me, like because I'm working all day long, and they had me on the concrete up and down a ladder all day long, so it just got worse and worse. By the end of the day, I was just like, "Fuck this!" So I eventually, I called them, like yeah. the next day. But usually, I go, you get so fucking sick of something, and then finally you just snap and be like, "We're gonna fucking deal with it." Yeah. So I called them, and they're like, "Okay, the you know the embargo is off. We can do surgeries embargo. again." My dad's surgery. He's gotta get a. He's got to get a new Something dick. Something his ankle. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's because when he broke his leg, his ankle's all fucking wiped out. Mm-hmm. And it's getting worse. Powder down there. Nothing left, so they have to do a replacement now. Which is kind of trippy. Real bionic. Bionic? bionic I foot. wish, dude. If that were the case, I'd break everything. I mean, yeah, I... I mean, that's a whole different story. <laughs> this is another podcast. That's for one of our sci-fi podcasts. We should do one of those. All right, I'm Matt Bonta. And I'm Corey Easton. I hope you enjoyed God's Peace out, homie.